Welcome to Arcade Attack. A retro gaming podcast for up to four players. Welcome listeners to another Arcade Attack podcast. My name is Dylan and as always I am with Adrian. Yeah, I'm I'm always here. Hello mate, (laughs) hello. Part of the furniture. Yep, 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 you and me both. Um, And uh, maybe is is Rob here? Oh, no no Rob, no Rob this week. Maybe Kev stepping in, is (laughs) Kev here? No, Kev's not here either. (laughs) I tell you who is here. It's Keith! Yes! Hello! It's Keith! <laughs> hello, sh- hello, strangers! <laughs> Keith is back! I'm back! How do you feel, Keith? Uh, uh, fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> it's weird, like, because obviously to you guys, it's been a while since mm. we recorded together. Mm-hmm. But I, I, like, in real terms, how many podcasts is it? I don't actually know. <laughs> Eight, obviously nine? We record a few at Something a time. like that? Yeah. 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 So, so I've been, it's been, I've been a gone a while. Podcast wise, I don't think the listeners would have heard your voice for a long time. Not since the music pod. No. Oh, that's right, yeah. But Keith's recharged. Because that was like an hour of me. I thought I'd give everyone a break. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Keith's like one of those old infrared Mega Drive, um, controllers. We put him for a long charge. <laughs> and he's finally, he's finally got enough so we can get through Streets of Rage in one sesh. So he's, he's, yeah. he's there. I'm back. It he's sounded there. like you guys were having too much fun without me. So. Oh, shush. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> but yeah, so I'll, I'm going to hand over the reins to Keith. Oh, no. Because the that's rains. what, because like, yeah, when, when we say welcome back, we just, just, just chuck you in. <laughs> deep end. <laughs> yeah. Chuck you in deep end. Well, so, yeah. I know I wasn't going to come back for any old podcast. Oh no. So, you know, it depended on the subject, obviously. <laughs> um, so what are we going to talk about today? Beans. Be- <laughs> what? No, not beans. Not, okay. not beans. <laughs> There's no way I would have come out of semi retirement for beans. Mean beans. <laughs> now, was it? Dr. Robotnik's I mean... For Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, I might have done. <laughs> Puyo Puyo, where you Puyo, Puyo. About, uh, half an yeah, hour. Puyo, Puyo. <laughs> Puyo, Puyo. Yeah. But no, it's um, it's a console special. Console special. Have we done console many of those? Console special, so we've, we've done, done a, some console specials. Few, <laughs> <laughs> this is a console special. <laughs> what was the last one? Amiga? A Game Boy? Game Boy. No, of Master course. System. The oh Master yeah, you have loads. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're ranking them. I have been listening to them, honest. Okay, so... Let's not open up the is it retro, is it oh, not no. retro debate. Oh, um, I mean, oh. we're just going to talk about it because yeah. I want to. Um, it's my favorite console of all time. Oh, yeah. It's the PlayStation 2. Oh, wow. crikey. Yes. Yeah. Can you guys remember when it came out? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> when, I, when I say what are your, me- I don't mean what are your memories. I mean, can you remember when it came out? Oh. This is a small test. 2000, right? No? Yeah. Yes. Well, well, done. Done. well done. So come on, that's 19 years ago. I think it counts as retro, doesn't it? I mean, if people, would you say it's the quality of the games that that, that make people think that it's not retro? Because some of those games, because some of them haven't fantastic. aged. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, it, is that it? Is that it? Have, we, have I answered the question? You've answered the, the question. Yeah. So minutes. it was first released in Japan in March 2000. North America in October 2000, mm. and Europe and Australia in November of 2000. Jeebus. Yeah. What a console. So it was part of the sixth console generation. I never really keep up with those, so what? that must mean we're in, what, the eighth one now? Yeah. Yeah? Um, yeah, PS4, right. PS5. Right, yeah. yeah. PS6. PS6. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it was, oh, so what was its main competition? It was the Dreamcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, GameCube. Yeah, and then slightly afterwards the Xbox, wasn't it? Yeah. So that would have been that would have been the PS2's main competition when it came out. Um, so was I? Was I the first one out of us? You were the first one? one because you paid an extortionate amount of money for one. <laughs> I paid, and I remember a hundred pounds. I remember, <laughs> I remember laughing at you saying, "What the hell is wrong with the PS1, Keith? Like, why are you spending yeah. exorbitant <laughs> amount of money on on something that's slightly better?" I give you two words. Student loan. <laughs> Student loan. 
That's what it, cause it didn't go and study. It certainly didn't go and study. <laughs> it just didn't go and study. Oh yeah, it was burning a hole in my pocket. And it was, <laughs> yeah, so I paid, uh, it was just over 300 pounds when it came out. That's a lot of money for a concert. Um, well, I went to Game Station in George Street in Croydon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, all well, my cash. And it, I got. You actually what, had it in dollar bills. I think <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. So they had to, they had to convert it to yeah, pounds. I did that thing where you kind of hold the notes and just like. Whoosh, yeah, you <laughs> right <laughs> behind the counter. It's like, here's my money. <laughs> Keep the change, you filthy yeah, animal. That was it. <laughs> and I got, uh, Ridge Race of Five. Yep. And FIFA 2001. Good. Which featured Paul Scholes on the cover. Not so good. <laughs> oh, and, no. <laughs> uh, um, and also a little, well, it was a launch title, right? And I only just recently repurchased it because I couldn't remember for the life of me what it was called. Um, cause it was that good. And it's an EA game. It's called X Squad. Mm. And it was a launch title for PS2. Oh, wowza. Um, and that Never was the, seen that. Ah, well, like that a was, bargain basement X-Men then. Well, uh, well X, X-, X- Squad. X Squad. Yeah. Like with X-Men, but with guns. No, um, they, yeah, they were the three games I got when I bought it. Um, this was probably quite cheap. But yeah, it was a launch title. Have, have, a, look, have a little look. I'm going to pass the box around to eight because it's not one I've ever heard anyone talk about. And surprisingly enough, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. It's not that's terrible. The, that's the best thing High you can praise. say about it. Shall I read the, it's a little bit here? Oh, go on. Back of, is, this, is it back of the box yeah, time already? Quick, it's quick. such a little bit. <laughs> back of the box. Back of the box. The year is 2037. Now, I can't do the maths, but that ain't too far away. We're getting there. Uh, terrorists have taken over a secret military complex, X-Squad, an elite convert force is called in to eliminate the enemy and regain control. There you go. There you go. That's about, that's about it, really. Yeah. I, work, I think when I bought it, I went in, again, it was, oh, so it came out in the November. I think I got it <sighs> December or the following January. So it was quite close to launch. So there wasn't like a, an unlimited choice, you yeah. know, of what to get with it. Um, and so I tried to get a mix of, you know, I've got a football game, got a racing mm. game and I've got that. Um, and it's like, it's, yeah, it's a squad based kind of third person shooter, really. Do you want the names of your squad? Oh yeah, go on. <laughs> Ash. Ash. Maya. Judd. Judd. And Melinda. Melinda. Not Judd Nelson, unfortunately. No. Cause he would be, if, if I was in a terrorist situation, <laughs> Judd Nelson, I'd, he'd be on my team. Well, he'd be the first guy you call. It would, well, yeah, Breakfast Club style. <laughs> he'd be the first one they first, they, they first shoot, wouldn't he? <laughs> Thanks, <Yeah>. Judd. <laughs> but no, it's actually, I like playing it again recently. I mean, it's, it's very dark, like graphically. Um, but it's not too bad. Like you have to select different squad members. They've got different attributes. Um, of the levels are all a bit samey. Um, like very industrial looking. Um, but I was expecting it to be a lot worse. Yeah. Uh, I think it, it reviewed probably quite averagely when it came out, but it's not too bad. But anyway, that was, that was my kind of first experience. Cause I, I don't remember, I don't, I don't ever remember, you know, like what you got with the Dreamcast, um, N64, especially the in-store, what do you call them? The display the, the units. Display with cabinet, the display cabinet. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the tester The trial ones. Things, yeah. yeah. I don't ever, I don't really remember PS2 ones, do you? No, don't, I don't remember them at all. So I don't remember, I think that mm. went, you know, buying it, I think it was the first time I actually got to have a go. Um, yeah, and actually, like, if you see, you see some of those knocking about sometimes, mm. on eBay, people are tweet about them, you never see PS2 ones. Yeah. No. Yeah. What is up with that? They just kind of assumed, eh, hey, it'd be right. Everyone's gonna buy it. It's it'll fun. be right. If people yeah. buy this thing, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I was coming from, like Dill said before, I had PS1. I had my PS1 mm. for... Great console, that. About, mm, not that long, actually. Cause I think I got my PS1 in about 99. So I probably only had it about 18 months. Yeah. And then I was like, ooh, student loan money. <laughs> <laughs> PS2. I'm gonna buy a PS2. Um, and that was it. But yeah, so that was me. Um, when did you get yours? Did you wait for the price oh, reduction? Mate, this is the thing, right? So I only got my PS1 late 98. Uh, I think I took it to uni. I can't remember when I went in 2000. You I didn't get a PS2 done. proper until, I think about 2001. Mm. So I'd missed a whole year's worth of PS2 yeah. gaming. Uh, but there are some titles I just had to get it for. I'm sure you can guess what they were. In 2001, mm. I'm going to say Sons of Liberty. Yeah. And Silent Hill 2. Yeah. There's one more. Resident oh. Evil, maybe. Yeah. Code Veronica. Yeah. Uh, Code <laughs> Veronica X. 
X. It Code was Veronica on X. Yeah, not, not Code it. Veronica X Squad, unfortunately. X Squad, uh, and that obviously came with the awesome Devil May Cry demo as yes. well. So that was a very that was a very good year for gaming. Oh. I think two thousand and one. Yeah. So, but th- those are the games that kind of spurred me to get one because yeah. they they were still pretty expensive after a year after mm. release. Um, but we're talking about a console here that was discontinued what? in 2012. Well, most of making it for oh, the console, years. yeah, yeah. But it, there wasn't there a fairly hefty price drop quite soon after it came out. I think so. But I'm sure it dropped quid or something. Well, but it yeah, wasn't. But 100 quid to us when we were what 18. Is, <laughs> I think I got mine for cash. 200 quid. Actually, thinking about yeah. it, yeah, I got because it was came in some bundle. Uh, I was like, oh, 200 quid. Yeah, I could push that. It dropped from 299 to two, like 199 quite quickly, mm, I think. Yeah. And I remember being really gutted. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I, I wonder I've, when that was. I've owned about three or four PS2s, but oh, yeah. I've, um, cause I've kept on trading them in and then getting other things, getting <laughs> game cubes and that and yada yada. But it was just, yeah, that first one I had lasted a good few years. It was, you know, we had all of the, all of those games. Then uh, GTA 3, uh, Vice City, and then it kind of stuck then, didn't it? It's just mm. the kind of, kind of console that's... Like, uh, oh, here you go. It? Sony cut the price of the console in May 2002. From, right. the, I mean, it, well, this is North America from 299 US dollars to 199. Oh, yeah. Which made it the same price as the GameCube and $100 less than the Xbox. Mm. So I think it was a, it was sort of... Because the Xbox didn't the Xbox come until 2001, it, didn't it? did it? Mm. I so think I got they it thought, just before yeah, they, we'll do that. I must have got it just before they did that price drop. Yeah. Yeah. The Xbox. The Uber Brick. Which, the Uber, yeah. that's Uber Brick. We never actually owned it, we? Any of us three ever owned the Xbox? An original Xbox, I, no. I only bought one a couple of years ago. Uh, just so I could play Dino Crisis 3. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. That's money well spent. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, because that that one wasn't backwards compatible on the 360. But so you reckon you got your PS2 about what 2001, late 2001? It's got to be before my second year at uni because I remember yeah. playing all of those awesome games in like my first couple of months at mm. uni the year after. So it's got to be that that summer or that that autumn. But yeah, do you I'm, remember what you got with it? Did you get any of those games that you? Was oh, about, that's a good question. I think I just got there with the demo disc. You know that crazy demo disc that came with the first one? Ooh. It had about it? 10 Ooh. games on it. Did it? it had like that, some that. NBA game and some other ones and it was really good. I think I had a Crash Bandicoot demo on it. I just played that for ages. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty awesome. Yeah. I was remember it? getting it home and watching the, like, the starting up Ridge Racer 5 for the first time. Oh man. And like in my, in my mind's eye, like my memory of it, it's like, oh my God, this looks incredible. And it would have <laughs> been on my little 14 inch TV in my bedroom. You know, uh, but pff, blew me away. It, just to step up from from PS One to PS Two was crazy. Yeah, when you think about PS One and its polygons, and you come into PS Two and its proper three D rendered stuff, oh, and it was a massive. That's step why up. people keep saying uh, there is this question as to whether it's retro because those racing games, mm. the Ridge Racers, the Gran Turismo Go. 4, right? Yeah. Um, they look, I think, as good as racing games now. I mean, racing games now are almost picture... They're pretty much photo yeah, real, aren't they? But yeah, it's insane. Th- those PS2 ones are just as pretty. They're a bit blarier. But they're just as they pretty. They do still look great. You know, it's not yeah. like... You wouldn't... <laughs> looking at the evolution of games over however many years, mm, yeah. do you think that's really 20 years of evolution? <sighs> like, between... I well. think it's just, you know, I think that the PS2 was such, the such PS2 and the GameCube kind of together just kind of really kind of stretched oh, yeah. what, you know, that, that next yeah, generation I mean, of at, consoles. Look at, look like, if you go to like N- Nintendo, look at the N64, the jump from N64 graphics mad. to the GameCube. It was mad. Huge wasn't jump it? in it. You know, yeah. N- another level. Love the um, GameCube as well, by the way. Yeah. So, so, again, people don't really wax lyrical about it. It is a great, co- a great console, but I need I to say that for another day, I guess. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely. So, hey. Do you know what? I'm g- what were you playing in <laughs> 2000, 2001? We know what you was playing, yeah, and I'm know. actually quite jealous. Yeah. Well, we had a dream class at the time. Yeah. Um, you're going to call me an idiot, really. I can't actually remember buying the PS2. It's so weird, isn't it? Um, I think I did buy it. It's, it was my console. You uh, never bought it. You never, you it just it? appeared in your room one day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to rack my brains. It's so weird. Maybe I was, um, I don't know what's going on with me actually, but uh, I think I just picked it up one day, but I didn't really start playing it really until I, um, moved house really actually. 
So I think I bought it. Didn't really. I was still playing the PC really in the Dreamcast yeah. at the time, and it was only until I uh, moved. So I, I stayed put, stayed put in Croy. And I had a, a young boy at the time. And, oh uh, yeah, was, that's what you were doing. I was you were busy being, being a, a dad. I was busy being <laughs> yeah. a dad actually. While we were bumming around playing <laughs> PS2. Yeah, so um, it was weird, really. And it was, it, I, I lived at Kev's house for or Kev's parents' house for a little bit, and, oh, yeah. and, and out, Emma's house for a little bit. Eventually, moved into that crazy Selsen Park Road house. Man, you've been all over the place. <laughs> I'll talk about bro. that later. But yeah. the only I, just, I, I didn't take a lot with me. But one thing I put in my bag was a PS2. Obviously, yeah. Um, it was a weird time for me, really, but. Yeah, I, I had a bit of clothes, not not a massive suitcase of stuff, but I meant <laughs> I made sure to make my PS2. Uh, well, again, uh, something I was obviously going to mention. Don't know about you guys. PS2 was my first DVD player. Oh, 100 percent. That's another big reason. So there's another why good reason to take one. it with you. And <laughs> DVD players weren't cheap back then. No? So it, you know, actually, to be fair, at one point I was using it more as a DVD player than the games. Of course, console, same here, especially you know we we all go through those periods yeah. in life when you're not playing games as much, and that happened mm. to me in the kind of early 2000s. Mm. But I still have my PS2, and yeah, it got used all the time. I actually bought. Did you guys buy the remote? No, I used no. the controller. I bought the remote. So <laughs> I had the, so it was it was a DVD player. I've got I've got the remotes now. I've yeah, got, I've like, got one a somewhere. knockoff one and the official <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah, I'm but, yeah, I never so had one back in the day. Obviously, the GameCube wasn't a DVD player. How, was the Xbox? I can't remember. Did that play DVDs? Yeah, I think it did. It, I, mean, okay, I can't remember, but it. it I think it played. Just because I didn't own one, I get, it must have done. Surely. Yeah, I think it does. But that was a massive. I think that was the a big, games were on bonus. DVDs, weren't they? So yeah. yeah. Sony have continued that because then with the PS3, you had a cheaper way of enjoying Blu-rays. That yeah, and mm-hmm. again, and you're getting fine. a games console as well. Why would you buy a Blu-ray player or a DVD player when you can get a console? Yeah, so, yeah, and if and if you think the PS3 came out in what 2006, mm-hmm. I mean. A, it was still very, very, a very, very niche market, Blu-rays. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Um, the PS3. So you're not sure when you... No, all I remember is... You got your first one. It must have been around 2000 and... I'm trying to get the dates right in my head. Uh, 2004, really, mm. when I finally went to Sales and Park Road, and uh, you guys used to visit now and then. Yeah. It, mm. it was lots of uh, just free... free Men, I was going to say, we're not, we weren't single, we weren't, we weren't single boys, three boys, boys, um, parties, drinking a bit too much, doing other sort of dodgy stuff on the Illicit side, substances, yeah, and uh, <laughs> it just brings back so many memories. I mean, me and John actually, and it's, it's a game I bought recently actually again because I might do a pod on it one day. But me and John, oh, he's dipped uh, into the bag. We get some of these out. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that later. Awesome. Um, have you guys ever heard of? Oh, I'm sure you heard of it. I don't know if you played it, actually. There you go, the last one. Uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. I have heard of it. I, uh, I've never played just it. just got around to start playing that. You've been playing it? Um, I've only like, got the intro and I realise it's a bit like an RPG, like slashery thing. It is. Oh, is it and Diablo It looks type? very cool. I will put more do you hours know, into it. I'm right. going to do a podcast on one day, but all I'm saying is it was a great, Let's have a look. A great co- co-op game that me and John used to play and we mm. would finish work. We were working full time at this time, at this, at this point. Working full time. We'd come home Play some Dark Alliance. It's a great co-op game. I played it single player. It's not quite the same. You need a friend with you. Um, if someone wanted a sort of a modern game to compare it to, what would you say is kind of close to it? Um, it's kind of an RPG, but it's it's a hack and slash RPG. So top down. I would argue it's a little bit. It's got Zelda elements to it as well, which I quite like. But it's um, I'm trying to think of a game. I'll tell you what game which is like it. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2 <laughs> <laughs> which I've got as well I never played that with John but I've got it recently so I've got the sequel oh, okay. they're very good people love say. Baldur's Gate I, yeah. I definitely have to get into it we'll, we'll have to play some co-op games soon Dills if that's uh, alright hello yeah so, um, I've never been near these games I've heard of them yeah. obviously very but well this, reviewed this is just again it's something that was going to come up probably later on again anyway just the amount of games still oh it's crazy that, uh, for the PS2 that mm-hmm. I've never been anywhere near mm-hmm. um, but probably would enjoy yeah. so much still to discover there is there is um apart from playing boulders gate which i loved actually oh yes this was all, this was on most of the time oh. um burnout free takedown what a game burnout free that's my favorite yeah. of this on my shelf as well it probably is a game. it probably deserves its own pod one day i think oh. we, we've kind is of said it that the we're, best? yeah we're yeah. gonna do a burnout yeah. podcast but, oh but my words what a game. again have a few beers in you <laughs> And just watch those cars smash into each other. It's so fun. It's hilarious. It's, it's, like, it's not just... But the thing with that as well is 
you can just race normally. Then you've got Road Rage, which oh, was my favourite. Yeah. And then the Crash Mode. Oh, yeah. The crash See how mode. much damage you could do. That's what oh, we used to do. Yeah. It was free immature blokes <laughs> thinking they're working full time they all look we made it in the world kind of attitude <laughs> coming home after a hard day's work smashing cars up on PS2 it was brilliant so basically my memories of the PS2 my fondest memories are me John and Kev living in this crazy house playing Dark Alliance um, and of course Burnout 3 and it was just those two games really they're the main ones they were the um, and you know what it took a while for me to get my, my PC back so it was a really good chance for me to stop playing the PC for a bit mm. And get back in the console uh, game. Um, I eventually moved in with my my girlfriend at the time. We got married soon after, uh, um, and I, I bought the PS2 there as well. We moved into a place a place not too far, and um, me and Becca played a lot of Crash Bandicoot. The, I think the Wrath of Vortex. Um, but apart from that, it wasn't too. too we spoke about this on, on our podcast. It wasn't too till my brother Chris did we. Give me a PS2. I'll cheap it for oh, you. Oh, this story again. <laughs> the old chestnut. You just like rubbing Open salt into the old wounds. wounds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and remind salt. people that might not have heard it. Yeah, we, we spoke about it on the We Love Katamari pod. So going back, it's quite an old pod now. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't quite understand it. But you needed some sort of disc in it, some sort of chip disc or whatever. I don't know how it works. But to, to get it... Do, what, have, do you know any I'm more assuming how it it's to get around the copy protection. Yeah, possibly. So you probably need to burn... <laughs> A disc and you burnt my disc. Yeah, you lent me you lent me a game at the time <laughs> and a corner covers tennis. PS one, because you know, don't yeah. forget PS two is backwards compatible. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna Thank you very much. Yep. Um good game. But I must I just forgot to I just gave it to Chris and said, Yeah, chip it away, do what you gotta do. And about a month later he gave it back to me and said, Yeah, we'll use a disc in it. <laughs> no. He's never forgiven me since. I kind uh, of flattered that you were playing my game, but also not flattered that you were in my game. Yeah. What did I even say to you at the time about it? I was just like, yeah, whatever. I was, <laughs> I, in a, quite I was probably quite drunk. I was like, oh, yeah, whatever, mate. As, long as, you get to, as long as you get to play lots of PS2 games. I just games. hit on something weird in my head. What's that? So what year do you reckon that was, Aid? Oh, sugar. So just that, give me a rough estimate. I reckon that was about 2005, if I had to guess, yeah. Still. As a casual tennis watcher, <laughs> at what mm. point did Anna Kournikova pretty much disappear from the d- women's? Oh, before that, tour? just one. There might have been some kind of like voodoo. Like she as soon just, as she, yeah. the game got erased from the disc, <laughs> yeah, it was like oh, erasing yeah. Anna Kournikova's career. Oh my god, it did, in tennis, didn't it? that was it. It's all you. Like. It's all voodoo. my fault. Yeah. So sorry, Anna Kournikova. It's got nothing to do with her <laughs> modeling career. But no, no, <laughs> nothing yeah, to do with. It's that. everything to do with a. And as, yeah. as you know, my, my, my brother chipped it, and I think it, it was a death now on the console. I think it died about six months later, truthfully. Um, oh. got, I've got a PS2 again since, truthfully. I've got some PS2 minis. I've got two in the house now. But the game I played the most was obviously We Love Katamari, a game I love. Yeah, and we have done a so. We Love Katamari yeah. podcast so if people want to go back through our little library. Up. It's one of my favourite games, actually. So um, I love it. I love the PS2. It's kind of been in and out of my life. Uh, but it's it's almost been like a sort of... A, an angel on your shoulder, on my shoulder. Always there. So when I was going through some busy times and moving around, not sh- a bit like a nomad actually. You know, do you remember those people who had the old stick and the old uh, thing? Or, or like Dick Whittington. I was a bit like Dick Whittington. <laughs> with the stick but the... Instead of having the cat on by my side, yeah. I had my PS2, PS2. my trusty PS2. <laughs> um, I'm going to go and find fame and, and fortune. Do you know what? PS2. Actually, this is true. Before I moved into that house, I, I lived at Kev's parents' house for a bit, and I, I had this little room. And it was, they took me in really nicely, and I remember. I think actually. It was the first time I ever played um, maybe Silent Hill 2. So ah. I think you lent me it. Think, yeah, or maybe it was... I, one of you I two think I lent Kev it, didn't he? And, and then he uh, must have just been around his house I anyway. must have been. I played it. I was like, still oh. got it, I think. He still give got it back it. to me. Give it back, uh, see me. I gave it back to you. Yeah, because... Kev it was, kept hold of it. Kev kept it. <laughs> I know it's mine because it's got a tear in the little cardboard box. Nah. <laughs> yeah. So that was the first... I didn't play it that much, truthfully, but I still remember going, yeah... Um, a little bit, a little bit lonely, but I put the old PS, connect the PS2 up, and Bob's your uncle. Wowza! It is, it, <laughs> it is like a little angel over our shoulder, it isn't is. it? So we kind of, we'll probably flit around a bit on this podcast because well, I wanted to, to go, go back to a point you, you gonna... mentioned earlier. Oh, you, know, you said about um, there's loads of titles that you're kind of discovering. Yeah, yeah. And just because because of our friend Wikipedia, I just had a quick, <laughs> quick quick skim on the page here. I can't believe you're looking at Wikipedia while we're recording. The I know. I can't believe I'm doing that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're both doing that totally right now. Uh, so, ex- what what they've done, and everyone can have a look a, look, a little look at this. As of 2007, mm. this is including games that have been released in multiple regions, right? 
So think about how many regions, so about uh, four or five yeah. regions, right? Um, minimum. Uh, how many software titles do you think they've counted on the PS2? Oh, and it's a nice big number. Uh, As of 2007. So it's even more since then, you think? Yeah, there were, yeah, there actually. Will be, there were things like the Sun, really... Sun Hill Shattered Memories and stuff that were released after. Yeah, that, but, yeah. you could get FIFA 14 on PS2. Yeah. I know we're in the thousands. I'll tell you that for free. Yep. Um, I've got a feeling it's around the 2000 number. 2000? Yeah, I, I'm going to say 2500. There you go. Include, okay, that's... I think four. it's more... I think yeah. it's closer to 4000. Okay. They put it down as 10,035. Shut up! <laughs> but <laughs> that can't be right. 10,035. But if you think, okay, so there's the Japan, the J- oh, Japan oh, if you're NTSC, multiplying for regions, yeah, Japan okay. NTSC, you've got PAL, you've got um, Amer- North American NTSC. <laughs> uh, so that's at least three regions. Yeah. And I'm sure there's some other ones. Is there one for South America as well? Is that four regions? Maybe. So dividing that 10,000 by four gets about 2,500 titles. Sounds about right, I think doesn't it's it? More, I think it's more. But it, yeah, that's that, that's the 2007. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then yeah, there well, were the titles so after. That. Another, so it's got it. You know. Okay. Least. Yeah, it's the biggest selling console of all time mm. as well. That goes without saying. Um, but yeah, look, like you know, it's got a massive library. It has ginormous, huge. Um, rare. It's just it's a monster, isn't it? Like, you just keep on going through all these, these kind of s- snippets. And, you know, 12 years is a long time. It's a long lifespan for any it, console. And it o- because yeah. it overlapped the PS3 as well. Yeah. Well, it overlapped completely. If you think 2013, the PS4 was released in 2014. Oh, crikey. That's yeah. So it, well, it, it, it survived the entire, what, seventh generation of consoles as well. That is just, it's just pure madness. Mm. I suppose the, the reason I mentioned to you guys about doing this podcast is because the PS2 is officially dead now. I think the last online servers are gone mm. as of a few months ago. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So it's, uh, and if you Google death of the PS2, a couple of people, um, say that it died in 2012 oh. when the Final Fantasy 11 servers went. Uh, other people are saying it died last September. Okay. Uh, because Japan had an aftercare system or something. I've not got it here. To like look after your console and that. Oh right. So that that's gone. <laughs> but yeah, it's officially not a thing. And it's funny to think that it was always kind of around. Yeah, that is a, it? it's a long time. Yeah. And it Why was like, did it last so long? What was so special about it? Whoa. Uh, there's a question for you. I just think Sony learned they did a great first console, truthfully, but they took what worked well the PS1 and made it even better and they have just made it slick they had a built a good loyal fan base already it was already a respected brand and added a DVD player and Bob's your uncle do you know one there's one key decision which I think really put it in good stead uh, from the off something that uh, the Mega Drive kind of does the SNES didn't do uh, oh, I got ya. Got me? I got ya. Backwards compatibility. Backwards compatibility. Boom. So, yeah. yep. there was, I read Console Wars. Keith got me a few years ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. I had a good read of that. And I think there was one, one decision made because when the SNES was in the pipeline, I think they really wanted it to be a backwards compatible mm. console. But I think for cost reasons, yep. that got cut out. The Mega Drive, has similar architecture in it to the master system, yeah. which is why the master system power base converter works on it. Sure. So if you had a master system, you could still yeah. upgrade it to a Mega Drive and pay a little bit more for, I think, about yeah, 30, 40 quid for the converter, then, and then you can enjoy your master system games. With the PS2, you instantly were able to play your PS1 games like mm. straight off the bat. That's brilliant. So you I think I reckon that was, because like I said, I probably only had my PS1 for 18 months. Mm-hmm. And I did have quite a few games for it. And I reckon that probably influenced the decision. Because it yeah. was like, I haven't, I'm not writing off all these games that I had. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna, yeah. I can move on to the PS2. Yeah. And still play all these great games. So, yeah, it's a big, it was I've a heard big that was thing. a big decision. I've heard rumours, I think the PS5 will be backwards compatible for every PlayStation one. So, <laughs> I've heard that, that rumour. And I've heard that Sony have squashed that. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't see that. I can't because see it's that. then wiping out its entire sort of backlog. Although, 
Although, having said that, yep. the PS3, the fat PS3... Yeah, that does both, doesn't it? Uh, which are now PS3. quite really expensive now. I actually bought a broken one just so I've got a chance of fixing one and getting one for cheap because there's, they're about 90 quid now. You can get really? Yeah, they're quite sought um, after. They are PS3, PS2, and PS1. Mm. And then the later ps The later ones aren't. Are just PS3 and PS1. Yeah. But you can get, you know, those lucky... It's got to have four USB ports on it. So if anyone's at home and you've got a, P, a, a PS3... <laughs> fat fat PS3, PS3 that's yeah. a bit... It's not doing anything, but it's got four USB <laughs> connectors, then you're in luck. Mm. Um, get it fixed. Uh, but it's, it's something that Sony always... I think that's a key... It was a key thing, mm. man. Do you know I what could, else as well? What? That? The controllers were backwards compatible. Ooh. You could plug, in a, dual, you could plug in a DualShock analog controller, PS1. Yeah. I did for years. I had a grey one plugged into my black PS2. Yeah, I had it, yeah, yeah. I had it for Player 2. So yeah. I, I, yeah, got, yeah. I got the good one. Player That's why I lost all the, the time one. against you, deals. Although, weirdly, didn't they work. They used the same... They sometimes the same would recognise it. Because you know the PS2 pad had... Well, you might not know. It had pressure sensitivity Pressure buttons. sensitivity on the buttons, yeah. Mm-hmm. So when, you're pressing, you got like when you're pressing X to accelerate like two, in a racing game, yeah. the harder you press it, the harder you... So it's not just on or off. <laughs> well, it's two, isn't it? Isn't it? So you do like one for like a light press and then... Further down, I think so. Yeah, I don't think it's as sensitive as being like no, but it wasn't just like I think it was pressed or not pressed, yeah, like they were before. Yeah, although there was, it's weird. There are some games where you can't use the old because I tried to play the getaway, yeah, on PS2 with my PS1 DualShock, but it wouldn't recognize it. Yeah, it needed DualShock 2, had to be DualShock 2. Mm. So there were certain exceptions, but again, just again, something like that, the controller port's the same. You can use yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. You don't, need you don't need to... Like, so when I got mine, I can't remember if I got one controller or two. Mm-hmm. But even if I only got one, I still have my PS1 controller. So I play two player. Yeah. It's the, done. These Smart thinking. It's decisions, isn't it? Yeah. And reading stuff like Console Wars, like, there's some really... Now it just seems like common, common, common sense, sense. But back then, if you were an exec at Sony, would you think, oh... I need a new console. I'm going to whack the old console in it as well. You wouldn't think that necessarily, mm. would you? No. It's clever, isn't it? Sony, they, clever. They, they yeah, learn Yeah, because so you much. just think, oh, people want the next thing. The next mm. thing. Yeah. But, you know, that they every, well, every man is also thinking about... They were about, clever enough to say, we'll sell this console. We'll sacrifice the sales of the PS1. Yeah. yeah. Because people aren't going to keep buying the PS1 if you can just buy a PS2. True. Yeah, they'll say, we'll sacrifice that. Yeah. We'll make the slim version. I think the PS1 came out after... After the PS2 came out, we'll make a slim version. Mm. People just want a smaller PlayStation, yeah. but we'll whack it in the PS2. And away you go. I think that's massive. massive because uh, the Wii did that, didn't they? It was GameCube originally. And I bought a Wii very early on, and I could play GameCube games. It's so like, funny that. Yeah. The, I've got a Wii, a Wii that does that. that as it well. was yeah. only early, like with yeah. the PS3, that mm. it was only uh, early yeah. PS3. phased it out. And then and phased then, it out, and the same mm. with the Wii. Yeah, my Wii died. I, you know, I was playing it a lot of my kids, and it probably, you know, loads of time in it. So I bought another Wii, and I was like, nope, sorry. Can't play GameCube anymore. Strange. It makes it cheaper because yep. the cost of the console has to come down, so then the the production cost of the console has to come down as well. So they take things out of it. I mean, I, I, I'm lucky that I've got a Wii that, that's the old one. I can play GameCube stuff on it. I'd rather still have a GameCube, let's be honest. But Well, yeah, exactly. But, yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's good to have that. Um, I don't have a HD thing for my, um, for my old GameCube anyway, so it's nice... I have a HD uh, cable for my for my Wii, so we can get that sorted. So it's done. It's done. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so here you go. I found somewhere else over three thousand eight hundred titles. There you go. I knew it was close to four thousand. I knew I'd heard that. Three thousand eight hundred. I mean, that's titles. insane, isn't it? And the console itself. I mean, we we won't do the guessing game because we've done it a few times lately. One hundred and fifty-five million yep. units. Yeah. It's still the best-selling console of all time. Yeah. Um. Still. You think how well, like, PS4's done. Um, I know. Yeah. yeah. And that's been out for, what, five years now? Yeah, 155 million units. The PS4 beat that, do you reckon? Um, I don't know what PS4's up to, to be honest, in terms of units. But how many years do you reckon the PS4's got left in it? I think... It must be over 100, mustn't it? Yeah. yeah. It well, be. the PS5 ain't that far away, is it? So you'd think people no. would stop buying it. No. Well, completely streaming gameplay isn't too far away. You know, the whole console concept oh, is... I know, is it's <laughs> there, just Thanks, Google. Sad. Yeah, yeah, Google, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't really know how much is left in having a console as such. So, mm. interesting times for <laughs> Sad <gamers>. times. 
Oh, here's one. I always loved this and I still love it. Can you remember, if you haven't just looked it up, what the, um, the, the Sony's name for the CPU in the PlayStation 2 was? I just saw it because I just screwed it. Uh, <laughs> is, it is it Tom and Jerry? Hello. No. No, it was something cooler. It's way cooler. <laughs> the Emotion Engine. The Emotion Engine. That's yeah. great. Emotion Engine. How good is that? That is great. And it ran at 300 megahertz. Okay, so my, 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 to me, my friend yeah. Wikipedia tells me that P- the PS4 is shipped just under 97 million units. So it might not actually be there. It might not get a chance. No. No. It's, that's still pretty good over five years though. <laughs> That's, isn't it? Good, That's pretty isn't it? insane. I've got here seven seven facts about the PSU you never knew, know about. Do you hear some? Go on then. Go on. Uh, well, we so know the f- well prepared research. <laughs> 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 it browsing the internet. We've got the first one. The PS2 is a best selling console in history. We yep. know that. True. Uh, the PS2 can be converted into a computer. It can. You can get all the bits for it. You can get a mouse, you can get oh, a keyboard. keyboard and stuff. It can connect to the internet Ooh. as well, can't it? Well, I knew, yeah, yeah I knew you got like Netlink and that. Internet, da, 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 da. Yeah. Uh, next one here. The white towers are there for a reason. Oh, I knew that one. So when you, what are the I white don't know towers? if you guys know this. Yeah, or you know when blocks. you first turn it, yeah, you know when you first turn it on and you've got like this, this kind of weird oh, abstract yeah. white blocks that represents the uh, game, the games you've got saved on the memory card. Oh, does it? Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, memory cards were in short supply apparently. Yeah, when, they, especially when it first came out and they were about 25 oh, quid apart. Oh god. I, I had to get a knockoff one. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, actually, I've got a knockoff and one they that was twice held, the size. They only held eight megabit. Yeah, that's right. Megabit. I know. <laughs> eight megabits. And no. I like, oh, oh, last year I got Red Dead 2 and there was like a 50 gig <laughs> download. So how many PS2 <laughs> memory cards do you need for that in if you have to do the maths? Many. <laughs> I've got here, this is a good fact, the PS2 supported Netflix. <laughs> Can you believe that? Did it? Apparently, yeah. I love that. That's um, I love the PS2 so much. It's amazing. Oh, this is, this is, this is a rumor, so don't, you know, don't quote us on this. But um, apparently it was used for uh, Saddam Hussein rigged the PS2 for like nuclear missiles. You heard about this? <laughs> oh yeah, didn't he buy like four hundred or thousand of them <laughs> yes. or something? And what he was going like, to use them to guide missiles? I think so. And they were all like there's apparently like massive like rooms of PS2s he's got, and I've yeah. heard that. Yeah. Well, here you go. It's, it's a good story. The, I like it. The main concern <laughs> was that the PS2 was powerful enough to be converted into a weapon that would be used <laughs> for acts of terrorism. Yeah. Um, Luckily, it didn't affect sales, though. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> oh, God. Um, Maybe it didn't affect sales. He, he bought most of them. <laughs> He's true, actually. Yeah, it's true. Um, well, there you go. I'll, I'll give a little credit, actually. This was from FragHero.com. So, fair play to Frag Hero. Some good little facts there about the old PS2. Well done, Frag Hero. Yeah, yeah, we like that. We like that. We like those facts. Yeah. What's What was the biggest selling game on the PS2? The biggest selling game We're on all the looking PS2. at it. <laughs> it's got to be. I haven't looked at this. I'm guessing. Aid's the only one who hasn't looked at it. Go on. <laughs> Have a guess. I'm just thinking maybe it's one it's, of a series yeah so I'm thinking maybe a Gran Turismo the latest Gran, or maybe Gran Turismo was it three on it or four they were both on it but no oh okay uh, oh 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 Grand, uh, Grand uh, Theft Auto San Andreas boom yes has to be right well there he yeah. is 17 million copies yeah. how good was that game <laughs> I still play it now it's brilliant I mean all the PS2 Grand Theft Auto games Open are world games, isn't it? Yeah. If you think about, yeah, the PS1 had stuff like Final Fantasy VII that was massive and yeah. it was open world to a degree, but to actually just go out and just do what the hell you wanted um, to do, this is how, this is how the PlayStation 2 yeah. kind of took Well, I mean, gaming. we talked about again going back to, on the GTA podcast. Mm. First time playing Grand Theft Auto 3. That was, Life oh changing. God, it was in terms of gaming. Life-changing. Unbelievable. I yeah. mean, just this is this was just completely new. Let's be honest. The first time you picked up a prostitute in Grand Theft Auto <laughs> Three, <laughs> that is that was life affirming. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was. You yeah. were never the same person ever again. No. That was a much worse person. I <laughs> you go. You were going to heaven, Dylan, but now you're going to hell. No, no. I'm definitely going to hell. <laughs> But it was just, and like the whole Grand Theft Auto series on PS2 though, yeah. Vice City. I mean, now we did talk about it in the GTA podcast, yeah. but Vice City for <laughs> just just the pure awesomeness and the immersiveness. Okay, yeah, you know, some of the graphics do look blocky in that now, but yeah, yeah. what an experience! What what an experience! I think it was. Can you think of any better experience? Just game? ambition. 
the ambition. Mm. You know, the, the only thing I can remember, and, and do you know, and I'm going to be honest about it, I love it now, but at the time, I don't think I was even aware of it. Shenmue. Mm. It's probably the only thing uh, that came before that that was as ambitious. Yeah. yeah. I mean, hey, do you had a Dreamcast? Yeah. Do you remember it at the time? Obviously, people talk about a lot about it now. Mm. I do waff and wonder how many people actually did play it. Uh, well, well Shenmue, not yeah. many. Not well, many. exactly, it was a bit of a flop. They spent a lot of money making mm-hmm. it, but didn't make a lot back. Yeah. But in terms of like sheer scale and realism and stuff like that, that's the only game I can think of prior to like GTA 3. Yeah. By City. Yeah, that's a fair but, shout. No, I never actually owned Shenmue back mm. then. Um, Were you aware of it? I mean, uh, did you ever like? Did you read like? Yeah, Jim I read magazines, magazines yeah. um, but it was always expensive, and I, I mm. just thought the ga- you know Dreamcast games were expensive back then. We got a few cheap. We got the sort of budget ones. Shemi never went into a budget, obviously. No, no. And um, like I said, even back then, I was, I was sort of gravitating more to the PC, really. So we got yeah. we got a Dreamcast and played like Ready to Rumble Box and all that. Good, good yeah, games, yeah. but not amazing games. You know, nothing. Shenmue would have blown me away though, but I saw the magazines. I always wanted it, but mm. I never got the opportunity to play it until mm. recently. Yeah, but yeah. That's I mean, that's and that's what I think about when I think about the PS2. Just everything changed. I don't yeah. know. Am I, am I wrong? Or, or was it that, really or, did. Or did I think PS1 change everything? Oh, I just because we we were we were very much like 2D guys before the PS1. Yeah, and then PS1 took 3D to. Okay, I guess you look that, back guess, now. You look so, back now. It's not great. But it just took 3D to a whole new. Plane. I guess it was two, yeah, two different. It was like two steps there. So yeah. like the 32-bit era was that step away from us who grew up playing 8-bit and 16-bit games, yeah. mm. 2D games. So like, wow, 3D games—they're real, they're a thing, and they could be incredible. Yeah. And then the next step was kind of following that up and building on that, and like, wow, this is. Yeah. It's gone from being okay. We can do 3D games that are a bit rough around the edges to wow, this is incredible. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Um, and do you know what I quite like <laughs> for the PlayStation Two is just in, in charity shops, really, because you still see them knocking about, Keith. Oh, look. <sighs> one of the I love the PS2. Right, it's my yeah. I say it, I say it over and over again. It's my favourite console of all time, and I, I, I that's one of the things I love about it now is that. I think because yeah. it sold so many units, because there were so many games for it, they're still everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can still get bargains. You can buy 10 games for a fiver. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, f- I kind of feel like in the retro gaming community, maybe a little bit, because of that, there's a bit of a snobby attitude yeah. towards it. A bit. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, like, eh, be- because... Because when you go into CEX, <laughs> the shelves are full of PS2 True. games yeah. and all the Mega Drive stuff or even PS1 stuff like that is behind the glass. Yeah. Like, oh, like, the, like the PS2 stuff is just tat. <laughs> mm. Sometimes it is. Sometimes there's a whole row of FIFA, you know. Yeah. But yeah. I, th- I do think there is not, you know, not amongst everyone. Because or there's either, so but many th- copies of every game out there. I feel like there's a little bit of a, oh, well, it's just too common. It's not yeah. exclusive enough. Why do I want to collect common. for that? Plus, no? you, could but you collect I, for it? <laughs> You'd need about Could 10, you collect everything? Ten well, drives well, worth. Yeah, you would. I mean, that would just be and People have been, I've tried, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was in Spain recently and uh, there, I saw a car wash tycoon. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> for, for one uh, euro, I thought, I'll get that bad boy. I don't I, think many people have got car wash tycoon, it's let's terri- be honest. I, I haven't actually played it, but I, when I bought it, so obviously I had a PSC at home, I did a quick YouTube and it was like, looks so bad. <laughs> Some of the games. That's the thing. There was, there was no, like, um, you know, like with Nintendo on yeah. the NES, you used to get the seal of approval. <laughs> yeah. Or the Sega one. Yeah. Back on the Mega Drive days. There was none of that for the PS2. There's no, like, quality control. There wasn't. It's like, but, you can bring out whatever you want on this console. But again, Sony had that, yeah, they had sort of a similar, similar outlook to, to Atari, but it was, I think it was better judged because they made sure that the PS1 and the PS2 are very easy to code on. They both mm, came yeah. with extensive dev kits that kind of yeah. had held handheld developers to an extent. Not like the Jaguar. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like trying to make games on the on the Atari Jaguar. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's why you got so many third party titles mm. out there, and you are going to get stuff like Car Wash Tycoon. <laughs> you are. And why not pick them up if they're a pound yeah. or well, a dollar? You know, if you're American. Um, why not get them? 
Well, just, just get them. Just Jeez. try them. You can, and you can think about. It. You can just chuck them in the bin afterwards. You, can go, you can just give them back to the charity shop. Yeah, I've had this now. I'm just yeah. going to give it back to you because you know I'm, I'm actually trying to get rid of my PS2 <laughs> collection because I don't have anything wor- worth anything. In yeah, it. I mean, I've I've got a fair few PS2 games now, but I'm. I'm, I'm not, I don't have the space or the inclination yeah. to try and collect everything. I don't want, I don't want everything. Yeah. But what I am trying to do is to pick up those games that I either missed at the time and yeah. remember wanting to play or games I did play and for whatever reason I sold or, yeah. and games that I'm hearing about now or finding out about now or people are recommending. Yeah. That mm. really sound to me like something that's mm. right up my street. Um, so that's kind of what I've been doing recently. Um, mm. Do you want to hear about some games I bought recently? Yeah, uh, yes, Shall we do that? Shall yeah. we do that? Car okay. Wars Tycoon 2. Car Wars Tycoon. Yeah, there's like five sequels. No, <laughs> just remember. Oh God, Car Wars Tycoon 5. Is it London Racer 3? <laughs> London Racer. Oh no, stop it. <laughs> it's not London Racer 3. Was there a third London I Racer? I don't think there was. I think no. they should have really given up it after flopped. the second one. <laughs> it flopped. So, you guys know I'm obviously a bit of a horror game fan. Yep. Little nah. bit. Little bit. Little bit. <laughs> Duh. Um, I'm going to go to Dill because Dill's a survival horror man as well. Have What's you this? played Cold Fear? No, heard of it though. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. Does it get the seal of approval? Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. What it's a there? Ubisoft game. Oh, yeah. You play, what's the guy's name? Tom Hansen. <laughs> Tom Hansen. US Coast Guard. Right. Um, investigating a distress call from a large Russian whaler, Russian whaler in the middle of the Bering Sea. A ferocious storm descends and a watery gateway to hell opens. I As like the this. horror lurking beneath the ship's bloodstained decks rises. Now, in Resident Evil, they love a boat. Yeah. Revelations. Oh, um, God, they love boats. They love a boat. There's a big, massive boat randomly in Resident Evil 7, even. Yeah. Um, but it's really good. It, it's a uh, 2005 release. Um, Not many people talk about it. it. I've no. heard of it. No one I'd heard of it, it but never, I hadn't seen any footage. It looks good. It plays well. What's all the key? The key? It's very much Resident Evil. It's mm-hmm. very survival horror, but um, there's some really nice touches because talking about the games on boats, that they really kind of implemented the feel of it. So when you're actually on the boat in the storm, yeah, you have to kind of compensate with your aiming and stuff like that. Uh-huh. You actually do feel the rolling of the boat on the waves and stuff. Um, and it's just, it's very atmospheric. It's, you know, the rain's lashing down. You can't really see the your view. It's like a camera in the rain. Nice. You know, so with you know, with the water streaking across it, and you can't really see. Nice. It's just very, it's very good, it's very atmospheric. Um, whoop. and yeah, like I'd never at the time. I think I probably briefly heard of it. Yeah. Never got around to playing it. Got that in CEX for like two pound fifty. Two pound fifty. Bang. Cold fear. Cold fear. That's quite this. a lot for a PS2 game, man. Two pound fifty. Oh, I don't mind. Sometimes I don't mind paying more though. If it's quality, you, yeah, you're yeah. gonna you're gonna wince then when I tell you what I paid for this next one. Oh no! Oh, now, know. do you remember? And this is for listeners as well. Do you remember the Clock Tower podcast? Yes, it's pretty popular. <laughs> this is a man. Oh, you bought one of the Clock Tower games. But do you remember? So I remember briefly after talking about the fifty-two different endings. Yeah. <laughs> Clock Tower. <laughs> we talked about some of the sequels. Yes. And the Clock Tower three came out on PS2. Yes. Haven't got that. Oh. I'm probably gonna. Um, but it was a bit of a flop. Huh. The game that came after that, and I did again talked about it briefly, was this one. It's another Capcom game, Haunting Ground. Ah. Oh. Haunting Ground. Um originally was going to be i think a sequel another sequel in, in the clock tower series mm. um it's got a similar gameplay style where you're being pursued and you have to hide yes. or trip up but your the, pursuer. the big difference is it's not scissor man it's like razor man it's instead. not scissor man razor man in this one there's four different pursuers if you want fork man uh no <laughs> knife man. man no knife man um space man <laughs> Please, man. Uh, <laughs> Spork, man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> when you're quite finished. <laughs> Completely forgot what I was saying. Um, yeah, it, it was originally going to be... What's probably, it called again? You keep waving the box around. Haunting Ground. Haunting Ground. Haunting Ground. Thank it you. was originally going to be Clock Tower 4, I think. But because Clock Tower 3 flopped, they decided they to... They call it something Kind of rebrand it. But it's... Um, I, I kind of mentioned this in the Clock Tower pod. It came out in 2005. The same year as Resident Evil... Ah, four. Four. 
Um, again, it's set in a European castle. Oh. Uh, very, very similar kind of. Guys, stop copying each other. Like, well, it's, it's not clever. It's Capcom. It's so clever. it's like. No, the dev team <laughs> used in assets. Capcom. And also, your. The dev um, team in Capcom are reusing the assets. I mean, come on, people. Your sidekick is a Remember. big white dog called Huey. <laughs> oh, for Remember the, the big white God. dog in Resident Evil 4 that you helped at the beginning? Oh, what was that the bear trap? Dog. Seriously? Oh, he didn't Capcom? have a name, but it's very clearly the same dog. <laughs> really? I kind of like that, though. Yeah. Um, well, the Capcom are reusing all their assets. No, the dog. Games. The it's dog weird, though. It's the same year it came out as well. It was odd that they it's released too it fishy, at the same isn't time. It? It's too fishy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you play as Fiona, and um, it, it's it's good. I'm, I've only just started this, but the the difference between this and like the Clock Tower game that I played is there's, there's like this panic system. So mm. if she gets a little bit panicked, um, the screen, the colours on the screen start to kind of bleed into each other a little bit. So you mm. can't see as well what's happening. I love that. Um, and you start to lose a bit of control. Um, and you have to either hide or get away from it. It's a bit like when you are. get drunk in Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <it's kind laughs> um, but then if she goes into major panic mode, like the whole screen, it goes like negative, like Nemesis style. Oh, wow. wow. Um, and you base, she starts sprinting and you can't stop her from running. So you have to just direct her. Try and guide her, but you can't see properly. You can't control it properly. Just run into a wall. It's over. Yeah. She's pretty much defenseless. So you just have to hope you manage to. She manages to calm down, and you can get away. But the cool thing about it is, in this, is not really weapons, but you can get sort of things like chamomile. So like, you take some chamomile or some lavender, and you can calm her (laughs) panic. It's like, calm down, woman. You'll be fine. Have some chamomile tea. Um, But yeah, because chamomile always works. Going back to what we were saying before, though, it looks amazing. Wow. We, it look, I mean, it's, I'm 2005, so I mean, Resident Evil 4 still looks good, doesn't it? Oh, it's, it's Capcom, it's Resident so Evil it's 4. big budget. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, I paid £15 pounds for this. Holy crikey moly. So, for, you know, it's. I actually thought it was rarer, but I was getting it confused with another game called Rule of Rose. Which oh, that's super rare. It's really rare. Um, that's like 250 quid rare. Yes, yeah. Um, but yeah, this I think you can get for between sort of 15 and 20 quid. Um, I'm enjoying it so far. I'll maybe give you a lend afterwards if you fancy it. But that's oh well. Well, I've got I've got means of playing it, which I don't know if I should tell the the, the listeners here. Oh, I could just t- to tell the listeners. Now, well, we'll we'll, we'll go through what you've, okay, you've got a few more left in your pile there. So this one, I haven't played before. I don't really know that much about it, but I heard a little snippet about it, and I was like, I have to, I have to have it. it sounds really good. Shadow of Memories. Mm. Oh, I've heard that's good as well. It's by Konami. Um. Shadow of Memories begins where other games finish, with the death of the hero. What's his name? Ike. (laughs) Hey, Ike. As his life slips away, a mysterious voice whispers that destiny can be changed. Once given this chance to cheat his fate, Ike must travel back in time, collect clues and solve the mystery of his demise. One question remains unanswered. In changing Ike's destiny, will he alter the fate of the other characters or even rewrite history itself? In this adventure, death is only the beginning. Um, So it's like a 3D adventure um but you kind of it takes place in various points through time as well oh yeah um yeah. I, haven't, I haven't even started this one yet but well that it sounds good. Really i've heard it's cool. good yeah i've heard it's good but that's what i mean it's these games that there's plenty of fodder there's plenty of crap that <laughs> you can get for the ps2 but there's also some really cool interesting stuff mm-hmm. that you hear about yeah. it like oh i want to try that mm-hmm. so i'll report back on that at a later date i got this in a little bundle on ebay at the same time as another game um, now this brings me neatly actually onto one of our regular listeners, friend of the show, uh, Robin. Hello, Robin. Boynez55 on Twitter. Um, because he is collecting for the PS2. I think he's some, might be slightly off, but he's got at least 800. That's mad. At least 800. <laughs> well done, mate. He might be pushing a thousand. He might have, has he broken a thousand? I can't remember. He'll have to correct us on that. Um, and I don't know if you've heard of this game, mate, because it was a PC game. Siberia, S Y B E R I A. No, you never heard of it. It's a point and click. Oh, it's a three. It's, it's set in a, it's a. It's a three D point and click adventure. So, a bit like early Resident Evil, mm. it's pre rendered backgrounds, three D characters. Um, but it's a point and click adventure. Um, it cool. came out on a PC originally. It did come out on PS3, and I remember hearing about it and thinking, oh, I'd like to try this at some point. Mm. And the other day, Robin posted his gets, and he po- showed there was a PS2 copy of it. I was like, what? I didn't even know. Yeah. I didn't even know it came out on PS2. Um, 
you were like, I must have it in yeah. this bundle with other things. Um, it's weird though. The premise to this does not sound that exciting, <laughs> but about, it, it reviewed well and apparently it's really kind of interesting and it's full of intrigue. But it, just like the, oh, actually it says it on the back. A journey of discovery and intrigue. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Kate Walker, a young, ambitious lawyer from New York, is handed what seems a fairly straightforward assignment. A quick stopover to handle the sale of an old automaton factory hidden in the Alpine Valleys, then straight back home to the US. Little did she imagine when embarking on this task that her life would be turned upside down. On her expedition across Europe, travelling from Western Europe to the far reaches of Eastern Russia, she encounters a host of incredible characters and locations in her attempt to track down Hans, the genius inventor the final key to unlock the mystery of Siberia. Her voyage across land and time throws all she values into question, while the deal she sets out to sign turns into a pact with destiny. Oh. Sounds pretty good, right? Sounds cool, sounds compelling. Yeah. So, again, haven't tried it yet, but it was just, I didn't even know it was on the PS2. That's, and that's kind of what I was, you know, getting back to before. These are some good pickups, dude. Yeah, this I know, I'm pretty chuffed. It's going to take me a while to do, because none of these are games I'm going to like whiz through. <laughs> no. They're no Car Wash Tycoon. So cool. I just love that. <laughs> They're no I mean, Car Wash Tycoon. It's a bit of a backlog of games there. Um, <laughs> and again, another one, eight. Are you, do you know this one? I've heard about this. Ah, again, PC, first person shooter, the operative, no one lives forever. No one lives forever. No one lives forever. Have you yeah, heard, heard of this it. one? Yeah, it came out on PC 2000. Yeah, heard um, of that one. And it's at the time. I mean, it, it was well regarded. I think as like one of the best FPS games at the time. Um, and it's it's like set in the sixties, and you play as a female spy called Kate Archer. So it's a bit and bondish, it's, isn't it? It's a bit bondish, but it's also a bit Austin Powers-ish in terms <laughs> of like the look <laughs> yeah. and some of the humour and stuff like that. Um, but it's also got, for, which was unusual for like FPS at the time. It's got some stealth missions in it as well. Oh, nice, nice, but again. I didn't really know that much about it. One pound fifty. One pound fifty. One pound fifty. Complete inbox with instruction manual. There Boom. you go. But there's like got this handful of games that either games that I wanted to play, like Haunting Ground, um, or games that I didn't even know were released on PS2. Games I never heard of. Um, it's just a gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? It is. It, yeah. it is. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, good selection of uh, games, there, yeah. Keith. Talking and about gifts that keep on giving. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Spill the beans. So you're talking about Adrian like playing all these lovely, you know, his chipped PS2 and <laughs> with your hard disk and stuff. Um, you can soft mod a PS2 now. Do you need an Anaconda Cover disc first? <laughs> you do not, this is the best <laughs> thing. You do not need an Anaconda Cover disc because you're not actually uh, like tricking anything. So I think a lot of that mod. Is that you're tricking the the disc is the disc has to remain in at all times, right? Hundred percent, yeah. Yeah. So the disc kind of fudges the console into thinking that the game is in there, and then it just plays whatever file that you've chosen on your hard disk, right? Now you can soft mod one. So all you need is one of those network adapters, which you can get off. I think I've got mine off Amazon for about fifteen quid. Yeah. Uh, you need a SATA hard drive. So you go up to about, uh, I don't think there's a limit on the gigabytes that you can have on it. So I think, I think I whacked in something like 160 gigabyte. <laughs> Cause I, I had a kaput laptop, uh, the, uh, motherboard, everything went. Yeah. So I just had this redundant hard drive and you can actually download. I'll see if I can put a link in the, in the podcast notes, but I'll probably forget. <laughs> when, <laughs> um, but, uh, you can actually format Use, you can download certain programs and you can format the SATA drive. You do need one of these external USB um, hard drive readers. So your desktop or your laptop, you hook it up to mm. um, this reader. It'll read the hard disk. You format it in um, it format it in a certain way so it's applicable to have a disk image put on it. And there's a specific disk image that you put on it and it's got all of the programs that you that you use to run ps2 game files right so once you've got all on there then you um choose what iso files so all these ripped ps2 games that you want you can download them or you can use one of the programs on there to rip your own so say if you wanted to minimize your library get rid of some space you can rip all your dvds using this as long as you've got like a dvd a dvdr drive our, our DVD RW drive, do a bit of it. Yeah. 
then you can <laughs> then you can you can actually turn your games into ISO files to and then you know but um put them all on the hard disk, whack it in the adapter in your fat PS2, so you need a fat uh, PS2. That's well, the, that's the one ones. catch. So you can't do it on a PS2 Dope. slim. Uh, and then bam, and you can play pretty much any game you want. So that's what I've been doing. So whereas <laughs> Keith has been going on this journey of discovery, <laughs> uh, he's been like going to CEX and like, oh yeah, two pound fifty. <laughs> I've been going online and going, I'll have that one, <laughs> uh, that one over there. And yeah, it's you know stuff like Yakuza, which oh you yeah. know that I'd never got it's, around to playing. No, me neither. You know, and you just you can just pick any old game you want. Yeah. Put it on this, and it is so easy. It's so easy to turn your fat PS2. So even if the laser has gone, so the, the biggest thing with the, P- mm. the the old PS2s is even with the slims actually, the laser will go at some point. Yeah. So if it's gone, have no fear. <laughs> you can just get the network adapter, uh, get an old SATA drive from somewhere, uh, get an adapter that so you can you can read it from your PC or laptop. And you can have PS2 gaming forever and ever and ever yeah, and ever yeah, and ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, you know, experience stuff like Rule Rose and yeah, Clock yeah. Tower Ooh. and things that, you know. You're not going to pay the money for. And you are, you're going to, you can experience it on the actual console. One thing about emulation is that it never truly feels like mm. you get any kind of yeah. PS2 emulator, PS1 emulator on, yep. your, on your computers or on the N- NVIDIA things or anything like that. It never feels quite the same. But this is a way that you can enjoy any PS2 game. Ever. You say any, but there's one that won't work. Because you've got a, not an ISO file, the ICO file. Da! To get ICO. Because ICO won't play. Da, 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 da. Yeah? Yeah. No. No. Bad, bad, bad <laughs> play on word. Bad play on word. Uh, <laughs> ICO does work. <laughs> yeah. ICO with the ISO. ICO. Oh, but then why? There's, another, there's another branch of games we haven't even talked about then. <laughs> so you're talking about the gorgeous I- games. The gorgeous, the gorgeous <laughs> games, the gorgeous games now that have to be remastered in HD. <laughs> they have to stuff by like, law. Stuff like Ico, stuff Ico, like Shadow, Shadow of the Colossus, the Colossus. Yeah. which yeah. didn't really need. It didn't need to be remastered. No, I mean the Shadow Colossus remaster. We we had a little rant about this the other yeah. day, but I, uh, it just doesn't have to be done. You can quite ah. easily just play the old PS2 version. It's great. Mm. I was playing the old PS2 version the other day. It's just, just, just great. Yeah. So I wrote a review as well for that on the side. So that's good. It's exactly. good. <laughs> While you were both going, I, I, I co, I, I, I co, so, yeah. I it so, took, that joke did, was so deep. It was so deep. It was like working on a different <laughs> level for me. Yeah. Did either of you use the eye toy? Uh, uh-huh. No, no. He, Adrian did actually. Did, did he? I? He did he because he came round my house when I had it. <laughs> ah, <laughs> so. So I traded in my first PS2 in, I think, 2003-ish, I think. Um, and then I immediately had to get another one. So I gave, <laughs> I gave back my GameCube. Obviously. You have withdrawal symptoms. Yeah. I gave back my GameCube and I said... You sold a kidney, but it was I worth said, it. Yeah, I said to the guy in game, I said, have my kidney. No, I said, I said to the guy in game, I said, what's like the cheapest bundle you do for a ps2 now and he said well it was 150 quid or whatever it was mm. and but you get the eye toy Ooh. i was like what the hell is an eye toy <laughs> and he goes it's a little little camera that you can kind of do and like you can move around and you can do these other things yeah. and then play these games on it and i was like uh if i don't have it can i get it cheaper <laughs> <laughs> yeah that sounds and he was giving you a sharp no <laughs> and he was like i remember this guy who's a bit shorter than me glasses i just remember this dude, dude, this, i probably recognize him in the street and you never forget said, the man who sells you your first eye toy no, you never forget that guy i tell you <laughs> and he was like no this is the bundle just take the damn take the eye toy it's and a free <laughs> eye toy so i was like okay all right then and it was the most fun I've ever had for half an hour. Because <laughs> the, the games that came with it were, there was like the cool little fireworks one. So you, cause yeah. you saw yourself on the screen. Oh, didn't oh you? yeah. The yeah. whole point is it picks up the outline of your image and you did come around my house because there was, there was one, there's one where you can just record yourself. And I think we were going out somewhere or something. You would just come around to my house to pick me up. And I was playing something on the PS2 and I was like, Adrian, check out this eye toy thing. <laughs> it was the best two minutes of my life. <laughs> <laughs> on the, 
that that memory card is long, you know, long to the wind. But I'm pretty sure I recorded both of us on it. Oh, can you imagine? Right, so awesome. if you ever found this, if oh, I'm, that'd be amazing. If ever found this memory card of us like <laughs> panting about on the eye toy, it's yeah. out there. Dude. And if, if we say, "Oh, we're about to go to Bud World," it's probably us. <laughs> <laughs> so Bud World was a bad club in Croydon that we somehow, <laughs> sure we somehow managed to blag our ways in One of underage. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, the eye toy. What, what, well, I never did you have the, one? I never had the pleasure. No. Shut up. <laughs> True. You can get one quite cheap now. Yeah, you might I don't as well really just one. get it. Well, it's actually, funnily enough, when I got gifted the silver PS2, mm. um, there is. Did you get the games? I got this Sega Superstars collection. I was like, oh, wow, what's on that? Oh, no, it's just like bad Sega iToy games. <laughs> iToy, USB camera required. Oh, no. Yeah. Not to be sold separately. So. Uh, oh, the person bundle. that owned this PS2 mm. must have had one at some point, but it's got yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog, Crazy Taxi, Nights into Dreams, Virtual Fighter, Samba de Amigo, uh, Super Monkey Ball, House of the Dead, uh, Space Channel 5, Choo Choo Rocket, Billy Hatcher, Puyo Pop Fever, and Virtual Striker. You need an eye toy. Do you know what I think? I need to on. get one now, actually. What I reckon has happened is the person that sold Dylan's eye toy, he actually sold you that bundle. But he uses eye toys so much, he's such a big fan, that it broke. So you couldn't pass it on. But those are eye toy versions of those games. They're all eye toy versions, yeah. So they're not the actual, yeah. 12 superstar games in one. No, but it was just when I saw that, like, oh, Sega Superstars. I I thought, oh, but this is. They've actually released the actual games. Look at it, it's like brand new. If they actually, like, did the actual games in it rather than the eye toy version. Well, it must have been bundled because it says all over it not to be sold separately. I quite like the look of that Virtua Fighter, though. It looks fun, doesn't it? Yeah, I'd quite like to give some things, of those That's guys just giving kicking. me images of that Sega Activator thing, you know, the, oh, the yeah. one we talked about yeah. where they had the ring on the floor oh, yeah. and he had to break the infrared beam to punt and kick and stuff. I wonder how well those actually play, but... No, I don't see, now now I'm tempted to try and get one. I toy, just to I see how it works. There weren't that many... I mean, P- the PS2 wasn't renowned for its... Uh, motion stuff. How'd you call it? Yeah. Connect was the thing that really took it off and uh, obviously the Motion Plus of the Wii. Yeah. It was a tad out, you know... It, wasn't quite ready, was it? There were some other peripherals, very similar to the things that we're holding. There was, wasn't there? The Sing- Sing Star, was it? <laughs> Sing Star. <laughs> yeah, again, it was the Sing start Star. of the rhythm games as well, wasn't it? Yeah, the rhythm games. Uh, well, Parappa. Parappa kind of was start, kind PS1, of started on yeah. the Sorry, yeah, I'm thinking but, of your Guitar but, Hero and your Rock Band. Guitar, but, yeah. yeah, yep, so you had all your guitar, you had your Guitar Heroes on the PS2. Yeah. But Sing Star. Yeah. You could, like, you know, Sing really badly, but if you put it on easy or something, you, you yeah. could trick yourself you into thinking pretend, you were the yeah, next Cardi Minogue. Good. Yeah, you could yeah. be the next Cardi Minogue. Yeah, hundred percent. I I was wanted to be the next Kylie Minogue, <laughs> <laughs> or the next Mister Kylie Minogue. Either either or, really. It's true. I see. So I just you know, there's so many things you can do with a PS2. Yeah, I can't, yeah, you can turn it into. A I, computer. I'm sitting here while we're talking and thinking to myself because if for us, right, we're mid to late. 30s. I'll just say we're late 30s. Mid to la- Shut up, man. I'm 36. <laughs> ain't my birthday yet. Um, and we all got, or I got it when it came out. We were 18 that year. Mm. And so it's been with us through that time where we became, where we grew from boys to men. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, through our, our whole, like our whole adult lives, it's been there. Yep. Yeah, yep. it was massive. Yes, it was groundbreaking. But is it just, because we're the right age. Is um, that's the question? Is that why why I love it so much? Is it, you know what I'm trying to say is will there be people a few years older who will feel the same about the PS4? Um, but then I I don't know if they will because like we've said that step up. Yeah. Whereas with PS4, well it was a marginal step up from PS3. Yeah. It's not the same. But I just because just thinking about my gaming life through the time I had the PS2. Mm. After those early years, like Silent mm. Hill 2, that kind of era, mm. there was a period of time where I didn't play as much. Mm. But what I did play a lot of was football games. Yeah, guilty as charged. Pro Evo on the PS2. Well, again, the PS2 ov- oversaw, pardon the pun, the evolution of the football the game. evolution of the football game, the, the switch in, well, the balance of power. Away yeah. from EA for a few years, yeah, it true. was widely acknowledged that Pro Evo was a better game. FIFA was awful. FIFA in those was terrible years as well. for I mean, a long time. EA didn't do yeah. themselves any favors. No. Really. Um, but like, so through that kind of period of time, like 
early early just to how mid bad 2000s. were the physics in, the, in any, oh, any, the FIFA any of those they were any of those awful, FIFA awful. games like it was just K- Konami just nailed it oh, with, with and I, I was every year I've got I've got about four or five of them six well, I think Pro, Evo, like Pro Evolution Soccer two three four five six mm. um I just played Master League after Master League. Oh, yeah. Craig Bellazzi. Oh, for- Bellazzi. Oh, it didn't even matter. The names, no, I don't no. care. Bellazzi. 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 <laughs> Craig Bellazzi and Giggsy. Yeah, I mean, we weren't, that, we weren't that superficial. No. We had to have, although someone I remember used to edit to, to make sure they had the whole Liverpool team on there. <laughs> hey, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, I used to edit all their stats as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 99, 99, 99. <laughs> Um, Bobby Fowler, 99. Bobby Fowler, 99. 99 tackling. 99, 99, <laughs> 99 defense. 99. 99 defense. Um, no, but people used to sell memory cards with, where they'd, with the yeah. option files on, where they yeah, edited, where they'd the edited the whole all the kits, teams. Right. Yeah, players, done everything. Stats, yeah. Can you imagine everything. the dedication that would take? It's I suppose. Time. Once oh you do man, it once, I used, yeah. when I bought the new Pro Evo, it used to take me a whole weekend <laughs> to edit the Liverpool kit, the names and yeah. numbers of the yeah, players, yeah, yeah. the stats. The boots. Oh, he's not wearing the right boots. They're the wrong colour. But you enjoyed, <laughs> wearing them boots. you enjoyed every but second. I loved it. Oh, I'm not yeah, moaning. Yeah, yeah. That's what I, I was, it was a different time. But that, that yeah. was the time. And then I would just play the crap out of it for a year and then buy the next one. Yeah. Uh, but that's, it, that, that was. Yeah, for me, I kind of was lost when playing a football manager at the time or championship manager. Mm. It's kind of the same feeling. You kind of stop playing other games. It takes over your yeah. life a bit, doesn't it? Which is a bit sad, really. It is a but bit. It is a bit. Yeah. I'm kind of, di- that's changed now because what, I kind of use those kind of games as an in-between game. Mm. So for me at the moment, yep. if I'm, you know, like if, I, if I'm in the middle of a big game, say like the last one was probably Red Dead 2 or whatever. Yep. But if I want to have a little break from that, I'll play a bit of Madden on the PS4. Mm. So I use those sports games as like an in-between when I don't want to yep. get back into the big game I'm playing at any time. But yeah, back then it was, it was, it was just, yeah, sports games. My DVD player. Yeah. But it was always, yeah. it was always there. I always had my PS2. Even when yeah. I got my 360 in. Yeah. I still hop back to the PS2. It's, I kind of mentioned it in the, um, the Game Boy pod. Mm. It's kind of got that intangible allure that's hard to almost explain. Mm. Um, other consoles have tried to do it. I don't think PlayStation, uh, you know, has ever been quite as good since the PS2. It, I'm not saying PS3 and 4 aren't as, aren't as more powerful, but it's that sort of magic, magic, huge step forwards and innovation. I think you can never sort of, I think they played like, everything. Something, didn't it? Yeah. All the ducks were lined up in a row. Yeah. In my eyes. It just, there's not really, will it go away? Will, will it, it ever away? die? The PS2 oh. will never die. Cobra Kai never dies, yeah. as they say. I, th- I think it's one of the, cause if you think you could probably sit here and we could talk about every, and we will and we have, talk about every console, um, and there's pros and cons, and there were good decisions made, mm. and bad decisions made. And, and I mean, I know I'm biased and it's my favourite, and I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's very hard to sit here and say, oh, they did this wrong, mm. or this decision was wrong, when it came to the PS2. Yeah. Can you think of any off the I top can't. of your head, like Ooh, one thing that is one thing that is objectively bad about the PS2? Not enough car wash tycoon games. Not enough car wash tycoon. <laughs> no, it just it's almost flawless, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sure people who are more technical, technically savvy oh, than probably, us will probably can, can pick but again, holes like in all, its like all consoles as well. Because some of the early games were a bit. All right, I've got oh, one. Yeah, really, rough actually. around the edges. Yeah. But as, again, as developers got used to, the, you know, what they could get out of it. I mean, some of the later games look incredible, even to this day. Yeah. Um, well, I've got one thing. Go on. Um, the N64 had it. The GameCube had it. PS2 didn't have it. Four players. Control pads. I know they had, uh, you could get the multi-packs, but... Uh, I, I mean, just didn't actually have that many games. That no, were but that was my slight... Games and that. That's what I'm kind of saying. It didn't have that kind of real four-player party. It wasn't party. a... Pa- no. Ah, I suppose it wasn't a party console, yeah. was it? I, it wasn't really held to be a party console. It's no. more like a, it was no, a one-player but co-op but they kind catered of thing. for it. If you think, you've just mentioned the SingStar games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We talked about like, Guitar Hero. There's also that Buzz two thing. Player, two Do you player, remember that Buzz? Buzz was with four the f- player. That was four player with the little yeah, buttons. Remember. That's I like remember. a party game. That's party it game. didn't have the, but still, that's the only weakness. Nintendo had it over that, I think, with the, with the sort I think of party Nintendo, yeah, yeah, I think Nintendo, 
They've always kind of had that in mind, haven't they? Yeah, Nintendo, Nintendo wanted more family. Uh, yeah, they want the whole together. family involved, don't they? Whereas, well, yeah, the PlayStation was for the player and slightly yeah. more mature. Yeah. I don't want to sound sexist, more more aimed at that sort of male target audience. It's a bit more manish, well. maybe. Yeah, uh, maybe again. Fond, one of my fondest memories of the PS2. This is an inside thing specific to us. Pro Evo Day. Pro Evo yeah, Day. Pro, Evo pro Day. Evolution Soccer. We used to just get around to play them Pro Evo Days. Pro Pro Evo. I used to do a little chart on a bit of paper. <laughs> Who's played who? Who won? Because I'm not at all competitive. <laughs> <laughs> who won? Oh, man. And again. Pro Evo Day. Obviously, that's a, that's a debate that comes up a lot in retro game back couch co op and. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. online gaming and stuff, but that was awesome. You know, so it might not have had four controller ports, but we managed. We did manage. <laughs> <just about>. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I suppose fi- final words then on the PS2 as a bit. Did of you a, want to say something about Robin? Or? Oh, before we go, oh, yeah, yeah go I on. did. I mean, because we we're doing it a little bit on the fly today. In the, it, it, we'd like to put out tweets normally to we ask do. people's yeah. opinions for comments and things, but we didn't really have time to, we didn't really have a chance, <laughs> but, um, I got in touch with Robin cause I know he's a big PS2 collector, big PS2 fan. Yeah. Uh, and I know he listens to the show. So I just asked him yeah. if he wanted to, you know, share some of his thoughts as someone who's mm. a big collector as well. So this is what he said. Um, and he got back to us today. Um, PS2 is the console I have the best connection with. Mid-twenties, enough disposable income, and before kids, so always picked up <laughs> new releases whenever they look good. Yeah. Also, I used to have a lot of mates round as there were tons of great multiplayer experiences. Oh. Pro Evo, Time Splitters, oh, yeah, great time games, splitters, yeah, to Smash Court that. Tennis, etc. It was also the first system... Smash Court Tennis. Yeah. It was also the first system I really got into JRPGs on. That's something we haven't really talked about because we're not so much into that no you know, mm. between us um, Final Fantasy 10 Dragon Quest 8 he's using all the Roman numerals here to try and trip me up um, <laughs> Rocky 5 <laughs> Rocky 6 Rocky 7 Wild, Ar- <laughs> Wild Arms 3 and Shadow Hearts are in my top 10 games of all time ah. and of course then there was GTA 3 I still think that game revolutionised gaming as much as Space Invaders did back in the 70s and Street Fighter did in the 90s well, yeah, yeah, you could can't that argue with that yeah. um, as a collector now there's just so much choice oh here we go as I approach the thousand game mark, there are still only about twenty to thirty that I've paid more than a ten or four. Love mm-hmm. that. And I mean, that's, that's awesome. That is yeah. awesome. I've paid. Uh, there's so much diversity and so many great games to discover. There's also a ton of hilarious crap that is worth enjoying for a pound a go. Spot on. I mean, yeah. the pound. Yeah. There's so much you pay for one go in the arcade. So why yeah, not? Yeah. If it's a terrible game, who cares? It's exactly. a, it's a bit of a laugh, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, there's also tons of other stuff to collect, loads of demos, memory cards and controller variants, plus a lot of colour variations across the two different console iterations. Overall, it's a gamer and collector's dream, and the bar to entry is very low money-wise, so what's not to like? Not yeah. much. It's good, you know, all good stuff. Yeah. Um, so thanks for that, Robin. Um, everyone should go and follow Robin on Twitter. Um, yeah. He's at Boynez, that's with a Z, 55. Um, and he regularly updates his Twitter with his latest PS2 gets. So Does. check his stuff out. So thanks for that, Robin. Can't really argue with any of his points there. No. Like, the, even the colour variant thing, I've got a lovely satin silver one now. Satin which again silver. Is, I was gifted it. I'm very lucky. <laughs> um, but I've been looking at some of, this, of the others. There's uh, a slim one, which I think was Japan only, and it's uh, like dark red. Ooh, it's oh, it's gorgeous. Yes. Like 160 quid was Ooh. the cheapest one I could find. Yeah. Um, there's that one, there's like a crystal blue one. You remember like the sort of semi clear PS1 controllers? Yeah. Oh, I love those. There's a PS2, that colour. Oh, yeah. Like a skeleton one where you can kind of see the insides. There's pink ones, there's like pale blue. Oh, there's so many different ones. You name ones. it. I mean, I love the black, to be honest. I do, I am a fan of the fat PS2. I've not, yeah, owned, I've, got, I've not owned a PS2 Slim. I've got, I've got a black PS2 Slim and a silver mm. PS2 Slim. And I but like the size of the PS2 Slim. It's so, like, it's so small. You can just oh, take that anywhere. Brilliant. You take could, that yeah. anywhere. Yeah. And with the connections, like with an old console, you mm-hmm. can take like if you had to stay in a hotel or oh. any, anywhere, yeah. you can just plug that in. I used yeah. to have the big fat black one, but luckily, <laughs> well, not luckily. Can you imagine how much more clothes I could fit in my backpack then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with your PS2 Slim. And you got one pair of pants. I could have a lot more if I had the Slim one back then. <laughs> No, but I mean, that's, that's, oh, here, here's a question. When you, I mean, it's, mine is now horizontal. When you first had your PS2, did you have it 
vertical or horizontal. <laughs> I never had the stand, so I was oh, pretty... do you know what? When I was throwing my student loan dollars around, <laughs> yeah. I think I bought the stand. And I bought the <laughs> as well. I'll have one of those, my have good man. Have some student loan dollars. Yeah, my good man. Mine was diagonal. That wasn't. <laughs> diagonal. <laughs> I no, one didn't work. It was just a novelty. <laughs> I think now it's probably better off because I've heard there can be issues with the laser if you have it stood up right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the time, I didn't care. I thought it just looked cool because it was no, it was novel, wasn't it? It we was ne- novel. All the other consoles they were always <laughs> flat was. like this. Um, always had it stood up when I got it. Loved it. Yeah, true. Yeah. PS two. PS two. I don't really have much more to say. It's just a great console. We have been going on for quite a while. I was just want to. Yeah, we just had to do a bit of a. A tribute yeah, it's to a it. bit of a loving, really. Like I say, there's yeah. not what. Is there anything bad you can say about it? I can't say anything. I bad do. I just. I feel. I feel like. I felt like we had it's to. It's never going to go away. No, it's, it's never, never going to go, go away. away. I felt like we had to speak up for it because I think there is. I might just be paranoid, but I feel like there's a little bit of an attitude where people look down their nose a bit because it's cheap. Yeah. And because the games are everywhere, um, but I just. I think that that's. That's the wrong attitude. It's a good thing that it's cheap because as retro gaming becomes harder and harder to get into and more and more prohibitively expensive to collect mm-hmm. for the consoles of our childhood. That's where it's going, isn't make it? A drive retro gaming is that. going to become a more and more expensive Yeah, probably. I mean, it is. It is. Uh, we should be grateful that such an amazing console mm-hmm. is still affordable yep. and easy to collect for. Yeah. And it's, it's just...